Let's talk about extruders. The extruder on your 3D printer is no doubt one of the most important parts of the machine. It's what grips the filament and drives it to the hot end. Now on lower cost 3D printers, it seems really common for companies to ignore this piece. A lot of times all you'll get is a couple of plastic pieces and a spring with no way to adjust it. And this can lead to all kinds of different issues, but most commonly, under extrusion. And under extrusion can be one of the most frustrating things to try to troubleshoot. So today we're going to upgrade the extruder on this Ender 3, and I'm going to walk you through a couple different options that you'll have when upgrading your extruder. So here's a look at the stock extruder on the Ender 3. You can see what I mean. It's just a couple of plastic pieces separated by a spring. I've had a lot of issues with this extruder. It seems like no matter how I adjust it, it either slips or it skips. So let's start by taking this extruder off. First thing we'll do is pull out the Bowden tube, and then we can remove the idler arm. It just removes with this screw, but be careful it is loaded by this spring. Now that the arm's off, we can remove the base plate. This base plate is what holds the motor on the mount, so the motor's going to come off with it. You can take loose this screw and these two up front, and the motor's off. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the drive gear as well because it's not needed for the extruder that I'm going to go to. So this is pretty much the first step in upgrading your extruder if you're coming from a plastic version. It's pretty much exactly the same thing, only it's metal, and you can adjust the spring tension. Adjusting the spring tension is going to apply more or less pressure on the filament, and that will help if you're getting motor skipping. Now this is a direct drive setup, so for the Ender you would need a Bowden setup, but they are available and they're around $10 most of the time. Now the next step up I would recommend is the Simi CNC EZR. It's only around $35 and it's a direct swap out for the Ender 3. In fact, Chuck Hellebuck just did a video on this about using flexible filament on your Ender. So for the EZR, your motor is going to be exactly where it was before and the EZR just sets right on top and you can bolt it down with these four screw holes. Then you can mount your drive gear and you can tighten it up through the hole in the back. Another great feature about the EZR is it's already set up to accept a Bowden tube. Then we take a big step up to something like an E3D Titan. These are going to be around $70, but it is my favorite extruder out of the bunch. I just like the way it's designed and the way it's set up. Now, unfortunately, a Titan is not going to be a direct swap out on something like an Ender 3. The form factor just doesn't allow it, but it is a great option when replacing extruders. Even though it doesn't fit on the Ender 3, I'd still like to give you an idea of how the Titan works. So the Titan will set on the motor just like the other extruders do. Now you will have to have some sort of coupler to use it with a Bowden setup, like this, because by default, these set right on top of a V6 style hot end. So the idler arm on a Titan rides on the motor shaft. And if you're installing a Titan, make sure there's no burrs on this motor shaft because it will wear this part out. So just to give you an idea, this is how the Titan would work. The idler arm floats on this motor shaft and there'd be a spring in between. Again, the Titan can be used with direct drive or as a Bowden setup if you buy the adapter, but it's three to one ratio. So you can use a lot smaller motor with it if you need to. Then enters the Bontech BMG. This is the extruder that has the most grip out of the whole bunch. The BMG has a set of gears to grip the filament from both sides rather than an idler. And then those gears are driven by a larger gear, which is driven by the stepper motor. This is also a three to one ratio, just like the Titan. And it's technically not a direct swap out on a Creality machine. They do sell kits for Creality, but you're gonna need an additional 3D printed part. The STL files are available for free. So to install the Bontech, you want the drive gear that they give you with the grub screw facing out, and you want it about a millimeter or a millimeter and a half away from the face of the motor. So this is the printed part that Bontech offers for the Creality machines. It accepts some three millimeter nuts on this side, and we're gonna use M3 by eight millimeter screws to install it on this mount. So the nuts have been pressed into the part. The mount's gonna sit like this, but you wanna put the motor in first, just like that. And then your extruder will sit on the outside, just like this. And with the extruder on, the whole assembly can go back on the printer. Again, I'm going to use some M3 by 8mm screws to attach it. 
The four screws are in, the whole assembly is on. Now we can remove the 3D printed clip from this side. You can slide your Bowden tube in. It goes in as far as it'll go. You can put your clip back on. We can close the idler door and then we'll put our idler screw in. You want to tighten it all the way down and back it out about a turn and a half. It should be about there. This will be good for most harder filaments like PLA or ABS. And this is about done, but there's a little more work that we need to do. Now, if you were to heat up right now and try to extrude, you'd notice that the Bontech was spinning in the wrong direction. And if you've already flashed a bootloader and a new version of Marlin onto your printer, that's no big deal. You can just go into the firmware and change that direction. But if you haven't, Bontech recommends that you switch some of the wires around here on the plug-in to get it to spin in the right direction. And I prefer not to alter this plug. My preferred method is to swap it around on the control board side. So you'll want to take your extruder plug loose. There might be some hot glue holding it in there that you have to remove. And once that's loose, I just like to remove this whole connector and spin it 180 degrees. They should just slide off. Now it's off, just be careful, don't bend any pins, and you can spin it 180 and put it back on. Connectors back on, you can plug your extruder motor back in. All done. So that should be enough to get your Bontech installed and get you spinning in the right direction, but there's one more change that we're going to have to make, and that's to the E-steps. Now since this is 3 to 1, it's going to be a lot higher than it usually would be. And if you've already flashed to another version of Marlin, it's easy enough just to go in and set it in the firmware and reflash. But if you haven't, I recommend doing it with an EEPROM command. So if you connect up to your printer via Proterface and you do an M503, you'll see this M92 line right here. My E-steps are currently set to 93. Bontech recommends that you start with E-steps around 415. So all you have to do is M92, E415. Now you might want to go ahead and run a calibration later to make sure that that's correct but this is a great place to start. So if you do M503 again, you'll see that has changed to 415, and you can do an M500 to save that setting. Or if your printer doesn't allow you to save things in EEPROM, like a lot of Creality machines do with that M500, you can add it in your start G code. So right after your home command, this G28, enter M92, E415. This will make sure the E-steps are set to 415 before each print. And while we're in Proterface, we can go ahead and do a test extrude, and everything looks like it's working correctly. So it looks like everything's set up and working correctly. I have this print that I did on the old extruder, now I'm going to run the same print with the new one and compare them. to say the Bontech extruder looks a lot better than the stock one did and that's just a couple of options that you can choose when upgrading the extruder on your printer. I hope you liked this video. If you did please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not leave your thoughts in the comments below and as always thanks for watching. Impressive.